Hi, it's Steve here, and yesterday I attended a trade show that Sony held at their head office in Weybridge. Now I have to say, this was a trade show, so the idea was really to show their new product lineup for 2018 to their retailers and distributors, but they did also invite along the UK press. Now once again, a lot of the UK press that were at the show won't have seen products before because they weren't at CES, but for those of us that were at CES, like myself, the, uh, the show was a bit of a disappointment because I had already seen the product lineup in terms of the TVs and AV products. I knew all the details and specifications, they'd already been announced. So what I really wanted to know was how much they were going to cost and when they were going to come out, neither of which Sony were forthcoming about. So when I left the event, I didn't know any more than when I went there. I'd already seen the product lineup, I'd already seen the demos they did at the particular event, and I didn't know the prices and I didn't know when it was going to come out in the shops. So for me, that was a bit disappointing. However, in terms of what I actually did see, let's go through the TV lineup and then the AV product lineup. In terms of Sony's 2018 TV lineup, there's the OLED range, and this is still going to be headed up by the A1, but new for this year is the AF8. The AF8 will come in 55 and 65 inch screen sizes, and it uses the same panel and the same processing as the A1. So basically they have identical pictures. According to Sony, the pictures on the two TVs are identical. The difference is in terms of the cosmetics. The AF8 has a simplified stand. It also sits upright rather than a slight incline. And rather than having one big subwoofer at the back in the stand, it has two smaller subs, which are built in with the actuators at the back of the panel. Um, now, they do say that although they have different subwoofers, one's got a big one, one's got two small ones, the sound quality with the acoustic surface will be exactly the same between the two models. So basically, um, they're identical, but one's got a more simplified appearance. I actually prefer the look of the AF8 to the uh, A1. The A1 is a very classy looking TV, but I never really liked the incline. So I think uh, the AF8 could be very popular with a lot of people who uh, perhaps weren't completely sold on the A1's design. In terms of Sony's LCD lineup for 2018, this is interesting because the ZD9 remains the flagship LED LCD TV for the third year in a row. Um, they won't be doing um, an XF94 or an XF93, so the new sort of flagship new TV for 2018 is the XF90. Now I've got to say, the, the XE90 from last year was a really strong TV, uh, very capable and very competitively priced. The new XF90 looks even better. This is one of the few things I've seen so far from Sony that's really impressed me because this TV has a direct LED backlight, it has local dimming, it includes the X1 Extreme process, which means like the ZD9 and the A1 and AF8, it will support Dolby Vision and it will also support HDR10 and hybrid log gamma. Now also new this year and exclusive to the XF90 is the X Motion Clarity. Now what this basically is, is black frame insertion, but the TV boosts the brightness in certain parts of the image, so you still get a nice bright image, because those of you who have experienced black frame insertion will know that when you turn it on, the image does get a bit darker, because you're literally adding black frames between existing frames. With this feature, you don't get that dimming, and the picture looked really good, bright and really great motion handling, so I've got to say, that was impressive, and I'm uh, interesting that that's only going to be on the XF90. I did ask about the ZD9, could that be upgraded? Sony said they didn't think so. So it looks like it's just going to be on the XF90. That TV will come in a range of screen sizes, up to and including 75 inches. Now also new this year is the XF85. Now that's edge lit, with the one exception. Uh, it comes in a number of screen sizes, but will be coming to the UK in an 85 inch model, and that will probably use a direct LED backlight, but no local dimming, I have to stress. In terms of the panels that um, Sony are using, um, they wouldn't actually confirm whether they were VA or IPS panels. I suspect it might be a mixture. I don't know for sure, although I've got to say on the XF90, the panels definitely look like VA panels, judging by the viewing angles. But uh, well, the other TVs, I'm not quite so sure. But anyway, the XF85, number of screen sizes, including a really big screen size, predominantly edge lit. But it will include a lot of features you'd expect to see, including um, not the X1 Extreme processor, but the X1 processor and HDR10 support, along with hybrid log gamma. Also includes Sony's Android Smart TV platform. Also new this year is the XF80. This again is edge lit, comes in a number of screen sizes, but at the smaller end of the scale, so 43, 49 and 55 inches. Uh, and that includes, again, features like um, the X Reality Pro and the Android Smart TV platform. In terms of the AV products at the trade show, 
they had their new soundbars on show. Specifically, they had the new ZF9. Now, this one is genuinely interesting. It's a 3.1 channel soundbar, which means it's got three channels built in at the front, it also has a, a wireless subwoofer, but it can accept and decode Dolby Atmos and DTSX, and it uses psychoacoustics to deliver an immersive experience with sounds coming from above you and around you without needing to use upward firing drivers or overhead speakers. And Sony seemed quite bullish about this particular product. I mean, they were demonstrating it at the trade show, and it does create a genuinely immersive experience. And they're saying, you know, we don't have to bounce sounds off the ceiling. You don't have to necessarily put speakers on the ceiling, although that would be the ideal situation. But for those who can't do that, and that, let's be honest, that's most people, um, this is a great solution because it's just one soundbar at the front and a subwoofer, but you still get that immersive experience from both DTSX and Dolby Atmos. Also coming out is going to be the XF9000. Now this is a very interesting product because and you think it might be quite obvious, but it's very rarely actually done. This has been designed to actually match one of the TVs, the XF90. So it's angled at the side so you can fit it between the feet of the XF90 and you get a nice, uh, nice, nice sort of nice, nice appearance for the matching um, soundbar and TV. It's a 2.1 channel soundbar, so it's a sort of stereo with a wireless subwoofer, but again, it also accepts and decodes Dolby Atmos and DTSX and uses psychoacoustics to give you that three-dimensional immersive experience without needing to use upward firing drivers. I'm very interested in both of these new products and looking forward to testing them at some point in the near future. Again, as with the TVs, no indication on pricing or availability just yet. I got the impression that the ZF9 might not be till later in the year. Finally, they had a small compact soundbar on show, which is the SF200. And this, uh, this is designed obviously for smaller living rooms, smaller TVs, gives you a nice big sound, but from a much more compact uh, chassis with a woofer built in, so there's no wireless subwoofer. Um, but yeah, it's basically designed for people who have, perhaps have limited space or a smaller screen size. So those were the products that they were showing at the trade show, but there was one massive elephant in the room, and that's Dolby Vision. Now, Sony began to roll out their Dolby Vision firmware update finally uh, in January in the US. Now, they announced it at CES 2017. It was supposed to originally be released in the summer of last year. Obviously, it's been delayed, and now, over a year later, they've only just finally started to roll it out in the US, and it has not been a smooth rollout because it turns out that they're using a low latency profile of Dolby Vision that's different from the one who's being used by everybody else. Um, this is due to uh, processing limitations in the TVs themselves, which kind of suggests that what we thought was true, which is this was a very late addition to Sony's uh, feature set back in CES 2017. Anyway, they finally released it in the States, but as I say, because it's this low latency profile, it means that whilst the apps on the TVs work, the TVs don't work with other sources. The onus is on the source manufacturers, and those people that make players, for example, like Oppo or LG or now Panasonic, the onus is on them to, for their player to support the new profile being used by Sony's Dolby Vision TV. That's not ideal, and, and there isn't really much incentive on the part of the manufacturers of other products to help Sony out. Um, so we were very keen to talk to Sony at their trade show about what's going on with Dolby Vision. And the, unfortunately, and very disappointingly, they simply wouldn't talk to us about it. All they would say was what's already been announced in the press releases. They wouldn't comment about it either on camera or off camera. Uh, and that's disappointing because we had a lot of questions here, not just about the profile they're using, but things like, you know, will Sony's um, AV receivers and soundbars that can support Dolby Vision, will they also support the new uh, low latency profile? Uh, will their player support it? Will other manufacturers have to update their AVRs and soundbars to support it as well? There's a whole host of questions here really that need to be answered. What it appears to be happening at the moment is that this uh, update is being beta tested in the States and we couldn't even get them to confirm that as they had originally stated that the update was going to happen in February in this country. So uh, it looks like it, they were sort of saying umming and ahhing late February for the upgrade, but I, I wouldn't hold your breath on this one. I think they're going to have to wait until they've fixed the problems in the States and then roll it out in Europe and the UK. What does that mean in practical terms? Well, it means that if you're a 2017 uh, Sony owner, you have to wait a bit longer. And if you buy a 2018 model, it won't um, ship with Dolby Vision out of the box. Once you get the TV, you'll have to basically update the firmware, assuming by the point that the TVs have been released, that firmware has also been released um, you know, to the, um, Sony TV users. So a lot of questions and not a lot of answers there, unfortunately, not even any pricing or availability information either. So that's why, for me personally, it was a very disappointing trade show. I'd like to see more um, transparency from Sony, really, when it comes to things like 
product lineups. I mean, when they won't even um, tell us what panels they're using, they will never tell you how many zones the TVs have got if they're using a direct LED backlight with local dimming. Um, and now they, they won't even ask any, ask any questions about Dolby Vision. And this is a big feature that they've been pushing for an entire year. People have bought their TVs on the assumption they're going to have Dolby Vision. And if they don't have it or it doesn't work properly, then I think that's a pretty big fail on the part of Sony. And I'd like to see them at least address that issue and answer questions about it. Anyway, that's my views on their trade show. As I say, for me personally, very disappointing, uh, no new information, and they wouldn't answer questions that I think are very germane to owners of TVs, both from last year, and anyone thinking of buying a TV this year. But I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you have, then please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.